Hallelujah. The wait is over, the singer was saying, singing. The wait is over. It's your time. It's your time, Dustina. It's your time, Jackie. It's your time, Ryan. It's your time, Terry. It's your time, Elijah. It's your time, our friends in Dubai. It's your time, our friends in Africa and Asia and Europe, United States of America, Canada, Mexico. It's your time, Jeep. It's your time, Zisla. The wait is over. Walk into your season. I heard the Spirit say, the wait is over. You don't have to worry. The sun is about to shine. God will do whatever he promised to do. This is Pastor Carter welcoming you to the Back to Basics online church where Jesus Christ is Lord and where the Spirit of the Lord is present and is changing lives. I thank God for you. Thank God for you taking the time out to come to be with us today. I guarantee you the Lord will bless you today. He will bless you. He will hasten his word to perform it. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Everything he says in his word, he will do it. What he promises in his word, Dustina, he will bring it to pass. Hey, Nathan, God loves you. I love you. We love you. Welcome, church family. Let the Spirit of the Lord rule in your hearts today and forevermore. The songwriter said, it's your time. The wait is over. Some of you have been waiting for a long time. You've been waiting for a long time. The wait is over. The wait is over. Walk into your season. This is your season. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Glory and honor to your mighty name, Lord God. Glory and honor to your mighty name. The wait is over, Ryan. Praise God. Praise God. We know it's still winter time and it's cold in Pennsylvania, but the wait is over. Glory to God. The wait is over. Praise God. Well, bless the Lord. We thank God for his love for us. Thank God for Christy Carpenter, Aaron Carpenter, all of our friends up in Idaho. We thank God for people all across the nation. We thank God for you. We bless the Lord. The songwriter said, the psalmist said in Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Good morning, Megan. I see you out there. Good morning, church. We praise God. We're going to uh, ask um, our friend Ryan to lead us in prayer. Ryan, how about leading us in prayer? Let's pray with Ryan, everybody. Ryan's offline at the current time, so we're going to ask, hey, Christy, Christy, would you come and lead us in prayer? Christy Carpenter from Idaho. Good morning, Mr. Carter. Good morning, Mrs. Carpenter. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you so very much for each and every one of us here this morning. I want to thank you for building us up and Mr. Carter speaking your word boldly. I want to thank you for blessing us and all of us opening our hearts and ears and minds and listening to you, Father. Thank you for your hedge of protection on each and every one of us and we can go out today and have a wonderful, big, awesome, glorious day and conquer and conquer and conquer all week long. Thank you for us standing and being your mighty warriors. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Thank you, Christy. Thank you, thank you for that powerful prayer. And we praise God, we praise God. Thank you, 
that your prayers enter into God's ears as a sweet sounding uh, phrase and a sweet smelling fragrance into his nostrils. Praise God. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. The Lord said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find not and the door shall open unto you. I thank God for, for all of you. I see God moving in your lives, in my life. I'm excited about what the Lord is doing. Praise God. I hope you're excited. Is anybody out there excited about Jesus? Come on, tell somebody about it. Anybody want to unmute your phone and just say, I'm excited about Jesus. Tell, tell us what the Lord is doing in your life. Come on, somebody. I'm back. I'm excited. I'm on fire. I'm ready to start this class and go out and have a great just learning experience all over again with all you guys. Hallelujah, Christy. See, that's what I'm talking about. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Christy says she's excited. And if Christy's excited, I'm excited. Ryan, Ryan writes in the chat window, I'm very excited about Jesus. Come on, Ryan, and say hello to us. Good morning, Pastor Carter. Good morning, church. Good morning. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's, it's, there's actually no words to describe how, how Jesus affects somebody's life. You know, it, it's more, it's more than excited. It's, there's no words to describe it. it. You just have to experience it is the best way I can tell you. Um, there's nothing like the experience of, of Jesus being inside you. I mean, just being with you, inside you, just everywhere, every day of your life. It, it, it is. It's, it's really a super wonderful feeling to have him in, in somebody's life, especially mine. At this time, you know, it's just the families and the friends and the, the ministries and the online churches and the school prophecy and stuff like that, doing that. It, it's just awesome. Praise God. Praise God. We love you, Ryan. We thank God for how you're, how you're letting God move in your life and Precious wife Tyra, your daughter Jenna, we just give God praise. I'm, I mean, the Lord is changing households. I'm a witness. You're a witness. We just bless God. Um, I, I, my heart goes out to those who do not know Jesus, and I pray that they will know Jesus, that they will take the time and know Jesus. A lot of people have heard about him, but they don't know him on a personal basis. So we want to go get to know Jesus on a personal basis. Praise God. And we encourage you. We encourage you. And we're, we're talking um, all this year I'm going to be teaching on basic foundational truths. We're not going to get deep. We're going to be, teach about the basic foundational truths of being a Christian, about the foundational doctrines. We're going to answer a lot of questions. We're going to lay this foundation. You see, there are many, many people who confess Jesus as Lord, but they don't take the time out to find out who he is. That disturbs me. It disturbs the Holy Spirit. It disturbs the Lord Jesus. Can you imagine Jesus dying on the cross for all mankind? And to have people confess him, but then they won't take the time out to try to change their lifestyle. They don't take the time out to want to study who Jesus is. And, and let's say a person who's 30 years old comes to Christ. That's 30 years old of living in sin. 30 years of living in sin. Take the person who's 50. That's 50 years of living in sin, doing sinful things on a daily basis. And then when you come and confess Jesus, that means your new life begins. You're born again. And the Lord Jesus wants people to get to know him, to get to know him. Take the time out and learn about him. Learn what the scriptures say about him. Learn what God is saying, what God has done, what he wants to do. That's what being a Christian is all about. It's not just making a confession on one day when you were feeling sorry for yourself or feeling bad, and so you confess Jesus and hope that by some sort of magic, everything becomes all right. No, to confess Jesus Christ as Lord 
means that you denounce sin. You denounce the devil. You denounce the works of the flesh. You denounce the pride. You denounce the lust, the concupiscence. You denounce the gambling, the alcoholism. You denounce the drugs. You denounce the fornication. You denounce all those things that pulled you down. You lay aside every sin and the weight that so easily besets you. And you begin to walk with Jesus. And to walk with Jesus means that you've got to study. You've got to study. And, and we know people for 40, 50, 60 years have not studied their Bible. Yet they confess Jesus as Lord, but will not open the Bible. No, no, we're not talking about cheap grace, as Dietrich Bonhoeffer described it. No, being saved is not cheap grace. Being saved means you make a confession of Jesus Christ as your Lord, and you demonstrate that he belongs to you, and you belong to him by studying, by building on a firm foundation. In other words, your whole life until you came to Jesus, your whole life was built on, on sandy soil, on shaky ground. But now that you have established and confessed Jesus as your Lord, your life is built on the solid rock. Now it's up to you to learn about this solid rock. It's up to you to study, to show yourself approved. Don't get blown away. I know so many people who have confessed Jesus as Lord one day, six weeks later, they're back out doing the same old, same old. They're back out in the gambling casinos. They're back out in the crack houses. They're back taking opioids. They've, they've turned back. Jesus said in the word, any man having put his hands to the plow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom. It's going to be an embarrassment to a lot of people who, who uh, think that because they confess Jesus and, and live any way they want to after that confession, it's going to be embarrassing. Jesus says in, in the, the Gospel of Matthew, depart from me. I never knew you. So take the time out to get to know him. Get to know this Savior and Lord who is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Get to know him. Embrace him. Love him. Honor him. Let him fill you with his presence. Let him fill you with the Holy Spirit. Now it's your responsibility. It's not God's responsibility. It's your responsibility that having confessed Jesus, that you build your life on the firm foundation of the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. David said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. We need this solid rock, ladies and gentlemen. And so all this year we're going to be teaching about how to build your life on a firm foundation. We're going to go from precept to precept. We're going to uh, look at the, 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 the uh, serious uh, intricacies of the Christian life. We're going to look at the teachings. We're going to look at the foundational principles. We're going to make it simple and plain for everyone to understand. At the end of this year, if you stick with this ministry, at the end of this year, you will have a solid foundation of what it means to be a Christian. You can teach others. You can go anywhere and, and stand unashamedly and, and, and proclaim Jesus Christ. You can teach. You can answer people's questions. And most of all, you'll be living the Word of God. So I thank God um, each week as I seek God, what shall I uh, teach on Sunday, what shall I minister? God gives me the word, and, and I want to just be true to him because I believe that this word is helping people to stand. You see, these are the last days. These are the last days. We are living in the last days. We have been blessed by God to be able to live in the last days. And, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, in the last days, the Bible says perilous times will come. Men will be lovers of pleasures and lovers of themselves rather than lovers of God. Don't join them. Don't walk in pride. Walk in humility. Don't cross over to the dark side. Ladies and gentlemen, there are people who have all the answers, and, 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 and their answers have, do not have God in them. Don't walk with them. Ladies and gentlemen, when you turn on the news and you turn on the news networks, they have twisted their stories there. Uh, flipping the script, 
and they're doing everything to try to convince you to, to believe what they believe. And ladies and gentlemen, much of what they're teaching is lies. And you've got to know the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So we're not going to be doing a whole lot of shouting and screaming on this in this ministry this year. Uh, we'll start shouting and screaming next next year. But this year we're going to lay a foundation. We're going to teach. We're going to teach the word of God so that people can stand. I want you to invite your friends to join us on the online church. Because listen, you're getting what a lot of Christians are not getting. A lot of people are getting the emotional stuff. A lot of people are getting that make me feel good stuff, but they don't have a leg to stand on. How, how can I say this? Because I look in the most chat windows of most online churches and most ministries, and in the chat window, in the prayer room, you get people asking all kinds of prayers. Pray for me. I have a hangnail. Pray for me. I don't know whether I should paint my fing fingernails, my nails red or yellow or orange. Pray for me. Uh, 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 I don't know what to have for dinner. Should I have pork chops or should I have steak? Pray for me. I don't know whether I should buy this dress or just bear, buy a pair of jeans. Ladies and gentlemen, you get people in the chat window and in the prayer room praying for stupid stuff. And, 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 and I, mean, I, mean, I mean, it's a waste of time. That is why we teach in the Paul Begley School of Prophecy how to hear God for yourself, how to ask God questions you can get your own answers. You don't have to waste a whole lot of time having people praying for you for dumb stuff, stuff that doesn't make any difference at all. Whether Should I have orange Kool-Aid or should I have lime Kool-Aid for dinner? Ladies and gentlemen, these things are a waste of a lot of people's time. And, and uh, as we are led by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit helps us to conquer these things. And so we're looking at... Uh, my guess is about 90% of the body of Christ, 90%, ladies and gentlemen, I'm looking at America alone, 90% of the, of the body of Christ uh, does not have a strong relationship with Jesus. And if Jesus were to come tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm using the term uh, the Holy Spirit put in my spirit, 90%. If Jesus comes today, 90% of Christians, so-called Christians are going to be blown off the map. A lot. They're going to be blown away. Why? Because they do not obey the word of God. Many uh, uh, think they think we're crazy for staying in the word of God. They think we're crazy for spending time reading the word of God. Brian, they think we're crazy for going to school and studying and spending our money for classes and courses to get to know about the Lord. They think we're crazy, and they think all you got to do is go to church on Sunday, say amen, put an offering in the plate, and go about, about doing your business and say, hallelujah, I love you, Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, there's much more required than this. Jesus said, he's going to say to many, depart from me. I never knew you. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're, uh, we're, we're serious about this. Dustina says she has pork chops marinating now for dinner. You go, Dustina. At least she didn't ask me. She didn't call me and ask me, Pastor. <coughs> Should I make uh, my family pork chops or should we have a uh, uh, chop steak? Well, praise God. Amen. See, it's led by the Holy Spirit. The Lord will show you what to do in your household. He will show you what to do in every situation. The Bible says, call unto me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things. So it's important that we study the Word of God. It's important that you teach your family the Word of God. It's important that you have uh, that you have a family altar. Take time out each week, once a week, and meet with your family. It could be in the den. It could be in the living room. It could be on the front porch and talk about the Word of God. Spend a half hour talking to your family about Jesus, and then pray for one another. Most households don't do this, but I'm telling you, you want to have a serious, strong household, start doing this. Praise God. We thank God for our friend David Carter uh, visiting with us from the nation of Dubai. Praise God. David's going to be preaching here in two more weeks on the online church. David, come on and say hello to us. Would you please? I know it's about 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night there in Dubai, but come on and say uh, hello to us, David. 
Hey, how you doing, Pastor Carter? Hey, it's great a job, to Oh, I, I, I'm excited to be on. I'm just enjoying the word. Um, I just thank God for the word that God has given you um, always. You know, it's always a re- relevant, fresh word, anointed word. And um, <clears throat> it's, it's certainly tra- transforming my life. And, and I know it's transforming um, the lives of everybody who's on right now. And the word is just going forth all over the world. And I just thank God for you and your wife and this ministry. And it's all the members on, online right now. We just, I just praise God for this, this, this word. That's what we need in this season, you know, a solid word. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Thank you, David. And give, give uh, our love to your precious wife and your daughter and your family. And you keep on keeping on. And we look forward to hearing from you as you bring the word to us in two more weeks on February 10th. God bless you. Amen. And we thank God for you. Lord, continue to bless David and his family, and the entire nation Amen. of Dubai. Praise God. Amen. God bless Praise you, David. God. By the way, David is one of our graduates. He, he, he graduated from our Back to Basic School of Ministry. This Back to Basic School of Ministry is the forerunner to the Paul Begley School of Prophecy. And the Back to Basic School of Ministry, David, will be fully accredited, accredited uh, by this time next year. And so you're one of our early graduates of the Back to Basic School of Ministry. I want to commend you. You keep on letting the Lord use you. Glory and honor to God. Thank you, David. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. Praise God. Praise God. Well, bless God. Uh, We thank God for David. I always love to see David come on. Uh, uh, He's a great man of God, and he and his wife were bold enough and courageous enough. Hey, Dustina, they left uh, McKinney, Texas two years ago. Actually, this is their third year in Dubai, going on their third year. They left McKinney, Texas three years ago so that they could go to Dubai and get a job. David and his family saw a great opportunity for a good job. His wife teaches uh, 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 the um, uh, American students in the school there, and David works there. And they're, they're in a nation where they're surrounded by Muslims, surrounded by Muslims, but they are witnessing Ladies and gentlemen, they are courageously and boldly witnessing and leading people to the Lord Jesus Christ. So you pray for David and, uh, and, and uh, his precious wife and uh, their family, that God will continue to bless them and uh, use them to the praise of his glory. Um, David and Ioka, praise God. Okay, we're going to look at um, our lesson for the day, our message for the day. How to build on the solid rock. I've already prefaced this message by uh, exhorting you to not just confess Jesus as Lord. Everybody, almost everybody has made that confession. But confession is not commitment. There's a difference between confession, confession and commitment. People can confess anything, and they can cause any words to come out of their mouth. In fact, when, when uh, crooks are interrogated, some make a confession to, so they can plea bargain, to cop a plea for a lighter sentence. Uh, there are forced confessions, but God does not want any forced confessions. He wants people to confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. But look at the rest of that verse. From uh, um, Romans 10, 9 and 10. That if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Now, let's say a person 50 years old comes into Christ, makes that confession, and believes in their heart. If you truly believe in your heart, then from that very moment, your life should start to change. You don't have to go back to that tobacco, that alcohol, that sex, the drugs, the gambling. You don't have to go back to lying and deceiving and and, 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 and spinning lies and flipping the script. You know, once you confess Jesus, that means you're acknowledging to the whole world that you have made a change in your life and you have changed. You have denounced Satan and you have confessed Jesus. That's what confession really is. I denounce Satan and the works of darkness and the works of the devil. 
I will not go back to them. And from now on, I'm going to serve the Lord. And ladies and gentlemen, this confession, it, it means that even if you face death, you're not going to change your testimony. John, the, the gospel writer John, was uh, sentenced on the Isle of Patmos as a political prisoner because he refused to bow down before the statue of Caesar. And, and uh, they told John, recant, recant, unconfess Jesus. Stop confessing Jesus and we'll set you free. Now John had a chance to get free and, and, and to go free. But he said, no, no, how can I recant, deny the very one who died on the cross for me? So, ladies and gentlemen, we see people today, they're making these confessions and don't read their Bible. They don't enroll in Bible study. They don't let anybody teach them. <clears throat> they have proud spirits. And you can't teach a proud spirit anything. I don't care who they are. I don't care who they are. You cannot teach a proud spirit a puffed up person, anything. Because there are people who think they know it all. They know more than the Bible. They haven't studied the Bible, but they know more than the Bible. You can't teach them. Now, how is God going to allow anybody in heaven who refused to study his word and refuse? But I confessed you, Jesus, you're going to say. I confessed you. I made a confession. I got baptized. Ladies and gentlemen, let's tell it like it is. Jesus said, depart from me. I never knew you. That's what he's going to say. And so we've got to go beyond this thing called confession because as Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the great German theologian during the Nazi era in World War, before World War II, Bonhoeffer gave his life. They killed Bonhoeffer because he was a German preacher teaching about the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he refused to deny Jesus. John refused to deny Jesus. There are many who refuse to deny Jesus. The martyrs of the first, second, and third, and fourth centuries A.D. were martyred. They were put to death. They were slaughtered. Some were uh, uh, put in the arena and fed to the lions. Some were uh, hung on poles in Nero's garden and, and drenched with oil and lit and became human torches because they refused to recant. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if these people had enough courage and boldness to not deny Jesus Christ, then why can't we make a stand? Why can't we proclaim Jesus? And why can't we learn about this Jesus whom we proclaim? The church has a long way to go. And I thank God for each one of you, because you're going to be in a position to teach people. Oh, the David, they will hate you. Jackie Fisher, they will hate you. Deep, they will hate you. And many of you are already realizing this from some of your so-called friends and, and neighbors and family members. <clears throat> but stand on the Lord Jesus Christ and tell the people, tell them you must be born again. There's uh, uh, a lot of people making confessions, but they've not been born again. Many people just make the, the, apost the uh, apostles' confession. They, they, uh, they attend these denominational churches, have not been born again, and they just repeat the creed. I believe in uh, God the Father <clears throat> and in his, uh, his Son, Jesus Christ, and on the Holy Spirit, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But they have not made Jesus their Savior and Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, make Jesus your Lord and Savior. Stand on the word of your confession. Your confession is what you really are. Don't get blown away by the devil because once you make your confession that Jesus Christ is Lord, troubles are going to come. Satan hates you when you confess Jesus. He's going to test you. He's going to test you. Oh, so you made a bold statement on the online church Sunday morning that Jesus Christ is your Lord. The devil is going to say, well, I'm going to see about that, and he will test you. Here have your husband running with other women. Here have your children drinking and selling drugs in school. Here have people acting crazy in your community. Here have crazies coming up to, to you uh, 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 and, and abusing you in the supermarket. 
Satan's going to test you. And the Bible says the testing of our faith worketh patience. Some of you are being tested right now. You're tested with sickness. The devil says, oh, you say you love Jesus? Well, let's see how you do with this sickness. Read the book of Job, ladies and gentlemen. Look at how Job was tried because he confessed God. He confessed to be a man of God, and Satan tried him. God allowed the devil to try uh, uh, Job, and God's going to allow the devil to try you. And the Bible says, for the testing of your faith worketh patience. If you say you have faith, you might have to stand on that confession, and, and all hell might break loose in your life. But the Bible says, when the enemy comes upon us like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. So we want to encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, we want to encourage you in the Word of God. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't give up because your money gets funny. Don't give up because uh, you lose your house. Don't give up because you lose your job. Don't be, give up because your body, uh, you get a bad report from the doctor. No, 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 no. That's the time to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. That's the time to dig into the Word of God. That's the time to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. That's the time to trust the Holy Ghost with all your heart. That's the time to put on the full armor of God. And when people do this, then they will prevail, ladies and gentlemen. 90% of Americans uh, do not want to hear this kind of teaching. Why? Because it takes effort. This kind of teaching requires effort. There's effort required in, 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 in obeying, obeying the Lord. There are uh, things we need to do beyond our confession. You may say, well, Pastor Carter, the Bible says uh, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart uh, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Yes, that's what the Bible says. Well, Pastor Carter, you're, aren't you adding on more to this? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm teaching the way the Holy Ghost gives me because there are too many people making these confessions and their lives are not changing one jot or one tittle. The Bible says, you shall know them by their fruits. You shall know them by their love. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, the scripture, here's the scripture, here's the scripture we all need to know in 1 John. If a man says he loves God and hates his neighbor, he's a liar and there's no truth in him. Now you can confess Jesus as your Lord and hate your neighbor, be envious, be jealous against your neighbor, and you think you're going to go to heaven? No, no, a thousand times no. The scripture says if a man says he loves God, whom he has not seen, and hates his neighbor, whom he has seen, the Bible says, the Bible says, I'm not saying this, the Bible says he's a liar, and the truth is not in him. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a long way to go. We've got to preach the gospel. We've got to teach the gospel. Ryan, we've got to teach it. Though they hate you, uh, you've got to teach it. Even if they uh, sentence you to death, you've got to teach it. Stand on the word. No, do not recant. Do not turn around. Because, Christy, if you turn around, uh, the Bible says, any man or any woman having put their hand to the plow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom. If you confess Jesus, that's the same as putting your hand to the plow. If you confess Jesus as your Lord and you look back, you turn back like Lot's wife and go back into sin, there's no salvation for you. There is no salvation for you. My prayer is that people's eyes will be opened by the Holy Spirit. People will hear the word of God. People will repent, and people will turn from their sin and be saved. God has given us so many, so many words about this. He says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, I will heal their land. If all who claim Jesus as Savior will humble themselves. Sometimes we've got to get off that high horse. We've got to humble ourselves. We've got to declare, I'm going to let this pastor teach me. 
I'm going to let this teacher teach me. Until you get to know Jesus for yourself, get a teacher. Get a, a, a God-fearing man or woman to teach you the Bible and learn the Bible. Teach it to your family. Humble yourself. Humble. Don't be so puffed up that nobody can teach you. I run into Christians every day. I see them online. Some of them call me. Some of them cuss me out because they know everything. You can't teach them anything. Uh, uh, and, and you cannot teach a hard, stubborn heart anything. You cannot teach a proud spirit. But the Bible says, if my people which are called by my name, that means Christians. If you're a Christian, you're called by the name of Jesus, will humble themselves and seek my face. How do you seek God's face? Through prayer, through the word, through worship, through fellowship. Well, if we will humble ourselves and pray and seek my face and turn from our wicked ways, that portion is added on to that verse, and turn from our wicked ways. Let us turn from our sin. Let us turn from our stubbornness. Let us turn from our rebellion. Let us turn from our pride. Let us turn. Let us start love. And here's the one thing, America, let us turn from racism and hatred. Americans need to turn from racism and hatred. And I say to your preachers out there, you need to start preaching about this thing called racism because a lot of you, a lot of you preachers out there, in my estimation, you are pure punks. You're, you're wimps. You're scared to preach. A lot of you white preachers are scared to preach to white people about racism. And a lot of you black preachers are scared to preach to black preachers about racism. To me, you're punks. You're punks. You're compromising the word of God. You're, you're just saying things that are, uh, 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 make your audience feel at ease. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a compromising gospel. We do not try to soothe things things over, uh, make things easy for people to follow us. I don't care who likes me or who doesn't like me. Racism is a sin. And I want to challenge you white preachers out there, start preaching to white folks about racism. And I want to challenge you black preachers out there, start preaching to black folks about racism. Racism is a sin. And, and I want to challenge you with this. How can any of you say you're going to stand before God having hatred in your heart because somebody's skin is different from yours or somebody's ethnicity is different from yours. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Don't try to stand before God and make some excuse. God's going to ask you, why didn't you love your black neighbor? Why didn't you love your white neighbor? Why didn't you love your Hispanic neighbor? Why did you hate the Mexicans? Why did you uh, 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 want a wall just to keep the Mexicans out? Why did you, why did you, why did you uh, do this? Why did you do that? And, 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 and God's going to challenge a lot of you preachers. Why didn't you preach the gospel? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. And so a lot of the Christians are in for a wake-up call. A lot of you pastors are in for a wake-up call. A lot of you prophets, a lot of you apostles, a lot of you evangelists, a lot of you teachers, and a lot of you members of the body of Christ. So let us make these adjustments now. Let us repent. Let us repent. If I, if I have racism in my heart, I need to repent. If I, if I have anything against any white person, uh, and, and, and the, here's, the, here's the, the favorite one that black people use. Well, they're the ones who put us in slavery. And so, so because white people put you in slavery, you're going to hate white people all your life? No, that is not the biblical way. The Bible says love your neighbor. And, and then, and, and then uh, 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 whites, I mean, so many whites have been brainwashed. I mean, deceived by the enemy. Uh, in the womb, in the womb, many whites have heard you're better than anyone else. You're the master race. Au contraire. No, there is no master race. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God loves all mankind. He is no respecter of persons. I know, I know there are people listening to this recording. You don't like what I'm saying. You don't like it because it rubs against the grain. It, it rubs against everything you were taught from childhood on up to adulthood. But ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. 
Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. And, and uh, you've got to get to know Jesus. Read about Jesus. Read the Gospels. Read what the Bible says about Jesus. You'll see Jesus went into Samaria, and he, he went up to that Samaritan woman, a woman despised by the Jews because of her race. And Jesus showed her love, and Jesus ministered to her, and she was saved. And when you read the scriptures, ladies and gentlemen, you'll see that God is no respecter of person. He is no respecter of skin color. He is no respecter of, of, of ethnicity. Praise God. And, and hey, hey, contact me. Get a copy of my book, Black Heroes of the Bible. Uh, next month is Black History Month. Get a copy of my book, Black Heroes of the Bible. Read about the 21 blacks God used in the Bible. Many helped change the world for God's plans. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've got to, we've got to empty ourselves. We've, the Bible says, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Jesus emptied himself of all the glory in heaven to come to earth to live like you and me. Jesus could have chosen to be a racist. His skin was white. He could have chosen to be a white-skinned racist. And he could have hated blacks or people of darker skin. No, but he emptied himself. He is God. God emptied himself of all his glory in heaven to come to earth to live in the body that God gave Jesus. And Jesus had to learn how to deal with his body, his ethnicity, and yet be God, be very God to live as a man and yet be very God and to love God and not hate anyone. And Jesus did not demonstrate any hatred towards anyone whatsoever. In fact, while he hung on the cross and just before he died, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He said, Father, forgive the whole world, all colors, all people, forgive them. Now, if Jesus can ask God to forgive all colors, how come you preachers out there are still preaching hatred and, 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 and racism? How, how come, how come uh, uh, the pews are, 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 are all of one color, people of all one color in the pews, and, and people of all one color in the leadership? Uh, how come there, uh, there are closed doors? Uh, uh, everyone is welcome to give you offering, but when it comes to leadership, when it comes to uh, those who are going to present the word, those in responsible positions, the doors are closed, and only certain people get these positions. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we're talking about the church of God. We're talking about the church that Jesus died for. We're talking about the church that was built on a firm foundation of love. Jesus said, on this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I, uh, I know some, some, some people don't, don't want to hear this preaching. You, you probably, uh, don't, 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 don't leave, don't leave, don't leave a flip to another a preacher, somebody who's going to tickle your ears, because if you don't face it now, you're going to face it later. If you don't face this kind of teaching now, you will have to face it later, and so you may as well learn how to deal with it now, and, 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 and uh, it's better to deal with it now. I would rather you be offended now by the gospel than to have to you stand before God after serving in the church for 60, 70 years, serving in your church, uh, killing yourself, working in your church, only to stand before God and God will say, depart from me. I never knew you. Won't that be a sad day? David Carter, that would be a sad day in Dubai. Jackie Fisher, that would be a sad day in Kentucky. Terry, that would be a sad day in Colorado for people to work themselves uh, all those years uh, honoring their denomination, working for the denomination, uh, 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 doing what the church told them to do, but yet disobeying God and at the same time not taking the time out to learn who God is. You've got to study this Bible, ladies and gentlemen. You've got to study this Bible. Oh, I had a whole lot of things I was going to talk about today, but the Holy Spirit led me in this direction, and I thank God. I thank God. My subject is how to build a firm foundation, how to build a foundation on the solid rock. Build your life on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. 
study the Bible. Study the Bible. All scriptures given by inspiration of God, and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man or woman of God may be thoroughly equipped. Don't, don't allow yourself to be deceived by the devil and to think that just because you confess Jesus, you can go back to hating people. You can go back to uh, cheating on your wife. You can go back to cheating on your husband. You can go back to taking opioids and drugs and smoking reefer and, and, and snorting crack. And you can go back to gambling and lying and deceiving. You can go back to spreading false news, fake news. No, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And so once you get saved, then you have the responsibility. You have the responsibility to build your house on the solid rock. Jesus said, there was a wise man and a foolish man. He says, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Now everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them, listen to this, Jesus said, now everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Both these men built houses. One built his house on solid rock. The other built his house on sand. Ladies and gentlemen, it's just like the three little pigs. One built his house of straw, one built his house of sticks, and the other built his house of stone and bricks. And the wolf came and huffed and puffed and blew the first house in and the pig ran to his brother's house in the straw house. The wolf came and huffed and puffed and blew that house in. And those two brothers ran to the house of the brother who built his house on brick and stone. And the wolf huffed and puffed and blew and could not blow it in. And that wolf represents Satan, the, 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 the wiles of the devil, the, the trickery of the devil, the deception of the devil, the attacks of the devil. If your house is not built on Jesus Christ and you have not built a firm foundation, if all you're going on is a confession and you have not taken the time out to learn about the, Jesus, about the Lord Jesus Christ, who he is, what it requires of you, you have only deceived yourself. I'm not adding on to the scripture. I'm preaching the word of God. And so build your house on a firm foundation. We can start by repenting of our sins. Oh, God, forgive us of our sins. Forgive us for allowing ourselves to be deceived. Forgive us for being proud and puffed up. Forgive us for not being teachable. Forgive us, Father, for having, having a proud and puffed up spirit. Forgive us for hating our neighbors. Forgive us for not loving one another. Oh, God, change us. Change us, God. We confess Jesus as our Savior and Lord. Now, Lord, help us to learn about you. Teach us your word. Give us a hunger and thirst for your word, Lord God. And, Father, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with the Holy Ghost. We need you, Holy Spirit. We need you. Lord, you said you would send us the Comforter. He's the one who will come alongside us and guide us and keep us. We need you, Holy Spirit. Come and fill us. With your spirit, Lord, we receive by faith. Now guide us, Holy Spirit. Guide us into your word. Help us to put on the whole armor of God. Help us to walk by faith and not by sight. Help us to walk in love, Lord God. And let the fruits of the Spirit be manifest in our lives. And I thank you. And Lord God, if there's anyone listening in today, listening to the recording, and if they want to uh, receive Jesus as Lord, help them to confess Jesus is Lord and Savior, 
And then, Lord, help them to get into a Bible-believing, Holy Ghost Bible-teaching church where they can learn about this Jesus whom they've confessed. And, Lord, build us all up in the most Holy Ghost. And we thank you and we praise you. Rebuke the devourer, God. Rebuke the devourer. I'm asking that you open the eyes of the people and open the hearts of the people, Lord God. And, Lord, pour out your spirit upon us. And we thank you. Save, heal, and deliver today. And we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Let the church say, Amen. Praise God.